Okay, so it's day two. Uh, yesterday we put the rods in. You can see the concrete's now gone off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these pins out, get rid of these string lines. We're going to clear the area. John and Amy are setting, setting the laser up over there. We're going to put a weed membrane down and John's going to put his nuts down and lock his nuts off. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Um, we're going to use a laser, but you can also use a spirit level. So I'll show you which way you can do it with a spirit level if you haven't got a laser. Okay. So what we're doing now, we're going to put a weed membrane, um, a weed suppressant membrane over the full area. And um, what we're going to do is cut it to roughly size, pull it tight over the rods and then push it down over the rods. The rods there to create a hole in it, using the lines, the green lines there as a guide. Just so that I can get it sort of relatively down square. Down. And um, what we're going to do now is go around and lock off the nuts. We found the highest point, which is over there. So we'll use that as our datum line and work our way around. So John's leveling his nuts. We're using the staff there with the laser finder on and we're using this Spectra Precision Laser. So I'll show you what he's doing. He's using his staff there to find the height of his nuts and then he'll wind the nuts down to the right height and then he'll lock the nuts off against each other. Like that. That will then provide the base for the shoe to go on and then he'll move on to his next one. I'll just quickly show you how you can do it with a level as well. So if you haven't got a laser, you can do the same thing with a, a level as well. So you sit the level on them nuts there and what he'll do, he'll find his level, wind his nut up to suit until that's level. And then again, he'll then lock that nut off. And then what he'd do then, if he was going to do his next one, he will then rotate the level, just in case the level's out and it'll always rectify itself. We'll lay the 4B3 in front of the rods like that. And then what I'll do then is I'll transfer the centre of the line across, use the square to find the centre in the timber. And then that mark there is where I'll drill my 25 mil hole through. So I'll drill that all the way down. Like and then when I get to the end, I will then get my drill with 25mm drill bit in and push some holes through there. Right, we're using this Hakoki drill um, and this DeWalt speed bit. What you want to do is try and get your holes nice and straight. So that when your rod goes on, it falls on the hole nice and straight. And the motion. So we'll continue to do that all down the length of the timber and then we'll get the circular saw and chop a bit off the top and I'll show you why we do that in a minute. 50 mil all. So what Amy's done now is she's set the depth of the circular saw so that the nut can get recessed into the timber. I'm going to follow in her behind and he's just going to just chop it out there. So that when we tighten the nut down it'll be all the level. Um, obviously the nuts are locked off, they'll support it and they'll now lift the timber to the top of it and drop it down onto the rods. Okay. So. The rods are 24 mil rods, the hole's 25 mil, so there's not a lot of tolerance for yeah, manoeuvre. So, give it a little tap with a sledgehammer sometimes and that'll be good. I am watching. You get it square, it's just like Timber's on now, then what we'll do is wind the nut down in that recess, and John's going round now and he's just nipping the nut down, which will secure the base to the floor. Sit the side one, sit it on top of them. Again, mark out for the nuts. I'll drill them and then we'll drop that down and as it's going down we'll then chop that off there which is uh... which all makes itself up there you go that will drop down now it'll sit on top of the front and back one and then I'll just chop it off there which is so I'm just going
so there's the base, practically in and done and dusted now. Adam's putting off the log, Amy and Sean putting the nuts down. Uh, Amy's driving the 250 mil screws in, keep all the frame tight together. So we've got uh, three bays, one, two and three. Uh, we've done that so that the 4 2 hasn't got a big span, so that will be all supported. And then we'll put our 4 by 2s across there on joist hangers and in full with insulation as well. There you go. So that's uh, 5 metres that way and 3.5 metres that way. Just notching the uh, joist hangers there so that we can bend them over. What we'll do then, we'll, we'll bend that over there, flatten that and nail them round. Okay, so that's all the 4 by 2 joists gone in, the 400 bays. Uh, you can see them the brain over the joist hangers there and they're going to nail them all. Where we've not been able to get um, the joist hanger on, like this one there. Because it falls on the shoe, we put two 250 screws through there and we've been fixing these joist hangers with these twist nails. Like I say, they've been cut, bend them over, nail them there, bend them over there, nail them there. And then we're also putting in these slate lats there which will support the insulation and stop it falling through. So what Sean's doing there is fixing the slate lats to the other side of the 4x2 which will then support the insulation. He's using the pass load, 90mm nails, spiking them through. Um, Adam and John are cutting the insulation to drop into the base then. As you can see we've done them. We'll finish all these bays and we're going to start putting the flooring down on top as well. 22 mil Acre Protect, it's the best on the market, nobody else is using this strength of flooring. What you can see is I've hung the floor over so that it just glides past the shoe and then when the OSB goes on that will go past there as well. We are screwing it down with these 60 mil screws. It's Makita Brushless DTD 171 Impact Driver and we keep breaking the bits. They're a pile of crap, we won't be buying them again. We're now currently using these wearers to see if they're any better. And we are using the five minute glue. Why do we use five minute glue? Because we have no patience. There you go. So I looked at if you want to do it going long and I'm marking up where the coffee suits are because otherwise we'll be seeing them. So we're going to do five minute glue. So that's us done for today. Um, I have a couple of pieces of board shot for floor that I've under ordered. Um, so what we've done, we've put our 4 by 3s and our 4 by 2s down. They're all pressure treated. They're off the floor on the pile system there. You can see the shoes as well. We've dropped in 100 mil rigid coil backed insulation, which is sat on slate lats. We've fixed the joist hangers and twist nails. We've dropped in this 22 mil Ager Protect flooring, which we fixed down with the 60 mil screws. And I'll just show you something for all them people who recommend where the bits were great. You can see how many have actually broke there. Uh, so they're not all that at all. Um, the reason why we haven't put the membrane down, which we normally do, is because come this time of year, it tends to trap rainwater. And then when the building's drying out, the rainwater comes back up through the floor and it just causes us problems. So it's over engineering, but I'd still do it. But if it's going to be wet, then I'd sack it off. So. Um, that's why that's not gone down there. So tomorrow we're going to get all the walls up and we'll probably get the roof structure on as well. Okay, so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and follow all the rest of it. And don't forget I've got a new group on YouTube as well. Not on YouTube, oh we're on YouTube. Don't forget I've got a new group on Facebook for self-builders as well. And I'm also selling my plans and there'll be a link at the end of this video. Thank you.